Today I'm working on a 2018 Ford Mustang. Now you can see I have a drivetrain behind me. This is the Mustang's drivetrain plus a couple of turbos. It is a performance build. If you are curious about that build, I'll go ahead and link you back to the beginning of that series. But we are not here to talk about that today. We are here to talk about a 2018 and air conditioning. We have a 1234YF, I think it's called, I think it's, I don't, know, I don't remember the last two letters. I believe they're YF. And I have a gauge set for that, and I have a gauge set for 134. I also have my homemade AC machine, and I'm going to adapt it to work with the system because I conveniently happen to have a tank that is emptied out at the moment. So I'm going to go through the process I'm going to take to get this stuff out because I can't get a 1234 machine without spending a huge fortune and I can't adapt this gauge set to any of the 1234 cans that are available now. Strangely enough, I went to the parts store and there are no cans that I can adapt to a gauge set. The only way you can use the cans is with an adapter. You can't even use it with the machine because the machine plugs directly into one of the large tanks. So what I'm gonna do today is something very unusual but it should work. I believe I have the parts necessary to do it. So let's jump right into it. Now, before I get too far in depth with this whole scenario, let's kind of start from the beginning here. So this is a homemade machine that I made out of an old AC unit, like a window unit for air conditioning. I believe the era of AC unit would have been R22. Now, it's not intended to pump 134A or 1234. However, it is just a pump. After all, it's a pump, it's got a filter, it can pump Freon. That's all that matters to me. I don't care if I burn the thing out early. Like I said, I got it from an AC machine or from an air conditioning unit from a window. It didn't cost me anything. I'm not worried about it. You can make your own if you would like. It's pretty simple, really. It's basically just adapting some flare fittings. I used AN fittings in my particular scenario because it worked out the best for being safe. And a bunch of valves, of course, to make the thing work. So, of course, I have to be very aware or I could cause serious damage, hurt myself or somebody else if anybody else is nearby. I typically only do this when I'm alone because of the risk of the system. I will be putting some safety glasses here putting safety glasses on here in a moment once I get to actually dealing with Freon. However, the first thing I need to do is I need to take this old tank that I also retrofitted and pull a vacuum on this and that. This tank is currently empty. I have a separate 134 collection tank that's actually a proper tank that I use for that. But this was the original one I adapted to make this machine work just so that I could test the machine out and make sure it worked before I went and bought any kind of tank. So this tank here, I had to cut the very top of it off. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a valve in here, a check valve or a ball that only allows Freon to exit this tank. You cannot put anything back in this tank and they do that for obvious safety reasons. These tanks are not meant to be reused at all. They have a safety blow off right here. It's like a, a thin spot in the tank, if you will. So if you were to blow it up, it would come out of this section here. Uh, a lot of myths of people claim that this tank, this entire tank will rupture, it's going to come out of this thing. I pretty much can promise you that. If you overpressurize it, it's going to come out of here. It does have a safety relief. It's a very janky one, but it is one. Now, I cut the very top off of this so I can completely unthread this and remove it. I believe there might be a very minor amount of pressure in here, like 10 PSI, so I'm not going to just pull this out and show you what I did. But basically, I drilled out the, the section that was causing the, the check ball thing going on, so I, so I drilled it out upside down and then I had to pressurize the tank, flip it upside down, open it up, pull the thing and shake it to get all the little metal filings, things like that out. Um, I did it for a very long time to get it cleaned out, but I got it cleaned out and it works. This here is just a basic vacuum pump and I have adapted it to dash four AN fitting. And conveniently enough, the gauge set for one, two, three, four happens to adapt to a dash four fitting. It actually threads on here perfectly, which will come in handy when it comes to pulling down the system for that. But it's gonna make it not very handy in regards of 
having to play with adapters. So I'm going to have to swap adapters between these two gauge sets to make this work with the gauge sets. It'll be weird, but let's get started on that. So the machine here, right now I have all the valves closed. I obviously don't have it plugged in. I have an extension cord here. This is going to be for this guy here. I might as well plug it in because it's not going to hurt anything. I have a switch on that. So vacuum pump. We need to adapt this tank. We need to hook it up to this guy here because we are going to hook the hose. I don't need this yet. We're going to hook this system here to that pump first. The first thing I want to do is pull a vacuum on this, pull a vacuum on this, remove all evidence of any 134A from this system. And like I said, conveniently, this thing should be completely empty. We will find out in a moment. But what I want to do is make sure I don't lose any 1234 Freon, and I don't want to contaminate with air or 134A. Now, if I contaminated it with 134A, it would not be the end of the world. 134A and 1234 are very similar in properties. I mean, they are so close. The biggest difference between the two chemicals is their flammability. 1234 is much more flammable than 134A. So, aside from that, temperature, compression, um, when they do liquids and gases are so damn close, they're really not much different at all. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy, put it on here, and we're gonna pull a vacuum on this entire system. Now, first, I'm gonna start opening valves once I get this threaded on here because I'm gonna see if any pressure comes out of there. I imagine there's a little bit, but I don't think there's gonna be much. So I'll go ahead and open a valve. Oh yeah, there's definitely something in there. So that is 134 in there. Um, I'm sure it's not much. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this outside, bleed it out off camera. I know I'm not supposed to do that, but what am I going to do? I have no other way to put it in a tank. So, not known to you, I'm making it disappear, right? Um, there's not much in there. Again, this tank should be pretty much empty. Or, yeah, actually, yeah, it's definitely empty. I got it open already. So, it's just got air in it right now. So, that tank is obviously empty. It's just whatever's in here, I'm going to mysteriously make disappear. I'll be right back. I have all the valves open on this thing, so there is no flow in any specific direction, anything like that. Uh, this guy has a valve, a strainer valve on that end, not this end. So I do have to connect this to this guy. And what I'm going to do is I am going to close this valve so I don't suck the tank down yet. Because I want to make sure that I get that pump system sucked down before I even try and attempt to suck the tank down. Hose, hose is on. Let me turn this pump on here. I can feel air flow coming out of it, so I know it's pulling something out. I can sense, I can, I can hear the change in tone of this thing. You hear that? change in tone is it pulling a vacuum on that part of the unit and as soon as I open this valve up it'll change tone again because it'll have to pull this down and do a vacuum but first I'm going to go ahead and let this thing pull down and do a vacuum for about 10 minutes and then I'll go ahead and do this guy and let it pull for another 20 minutes so I'm going to run this pump for approximately a half hour and make sure I get all air all moisture out of the entire system here and then we will be right back to adapt that to this. Well, while this was not the plan, conveniently enough, I don't have to move the motor to do this. So, I have the gauges here hooked up and just about ready to go. Uh, the, this gauge set, I did use it on another vehicle and it had a little remainder of Freon in here from the other vehicle. It was 1234A, it was a 2017 Ford F-150 EcoBoost that I had used on. So I had just a little bit in there. And so when I hooked it up to the vacuum 
system that I sat there and pulled the vacuum on forever, it seemed like, it actually filled that up somewhat. So I only have five inches of vacuum right now. So I don't have very much vacuum, but it is a vacuum. I did not thread down the fittings for the high and low side to go into the system of the vehicle, which is what I'm gonna do on camera here. Now, you can see I have a fitting here, and then I have one over there. There's the low side, high side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this this way, and then once I do that, I'll let you guys see the gauge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these up. I'll open the fitting for the low side. You can see that go up. Okay, all the way open. I'll go ahead and do the high side here. So we have that one all the way open now as well. And you can see it's sitting at about 70 PSI which means the system's full because it's about 70 degrees in the garage right now. So this works just the same as a 134 system. Oh yeah, there it is, YF. So one, two, three, four, YF. I was right earlier, I thought so. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open these guys up and it should bleed into that tank without even turning on the pump. So we'll go ahead and do that. I can hear it going in there. I'll open both of them up and I'll let it flow for a little while. So the flow has stopped, it just dropped a little bit, didn't drop it a whole lot, it wasn't anything crazy. Okay, so I am ready to set my valves. Now, my particular machine that I made here, I have four valves and they have to be flipped opposites in order to make it either recover or put in. I can go both directions with the machine. So I know which ones are my inlets, which ones are my outlets, and I just pay attention to what I'm doing to make sure I don't screw things up. So I am currently trying to take it from the vehicle and put it in the tank. So that is how I'm gonna set up the valves now as soon as I recalculate in my head how I have to do that because I wanna make sure that I'm doing it right. I don't wanna screw that up. Okay, I have it sitting in the right spot. Now, you guys can go ahead and watch the gate and I will, as soon as you hear it, I will plug this guy in. You will hear it pumping. I gotta get some safety, some eyeglasses on to make sure I'm safe. All right, so we got the black line here, black line here. The gauge is kind of hard for you guys to see, so you'll just have to look in the blue to see where it is. That's about the only spot, or the red on this side, to see where the needle is, because the camera might not pick that up very well in the darker condition. So I am going to go ahead, make sure I have this valve open, of course, and then plug this guy in. And I'm also going to face that, that bleed off this direction, so if it does have any problem, which it shouldn't, because again, the tank is empty, Plenty of room in there. Now, it should start moving. Yep, there it goes, it's going down. Slowly, but it's going down. I wonder if I don't have a blockage somewhere. Gotta watch a couple things. Make sure everything looks normal. It's not going as fast as it normally would. Uh, so I have a little concern about why that is. Last time I had this issue, there's a piece of an O-ring caught in one of the fittings. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little. Yeah, I'm gonna do this valve and watch this gauge and see if it drops down quick. Oh yeah, it pulls it really quick. So if there is a problem, it's up on this end. And I'm just gonna watch that this tank does not get warm at all, it shouldn't. Because again, it's low. So yeah, even the hose is nice and cool. As long as things don't get hot, if they start getting hot, then the pressure is going up. So you can kind of use that as a pressure gauge. Hold on this line, warm on this line. Not hot, I can hold on to it. Just warm. I have a feeling this hose is jacked up again. That sucks. I really don't want to disconnect it. It is working, so I'm just going to let it ride. Normally it's way faster than this, but I'm going to let it ride because, again, it is pulling it down. It's just taking a little bit of time. and. I do not want to lose any of this Freon if I can help it, because the stuff is crazy expensive. So right now, if I were to go buy a can of Freon, not only can I not adapt it, unless I have a machine and an actual keg, which is thousands of dollars, but it is 70 bucks for a little 12 ounce can right now. So I do not want to lose anything out of this stuff if I can help it. Uh, you might be asking why in the world am I pulling this down in the first place? 
and it is simply because, oh now it's starting to get a bit on the warm side, it is simply because I have to modify this car to do this. This is not a typical service. I don't like how warm this line is. I can hang on to it still, but it is getting warm. I'll get a temp gauge, give you guys an idea of where it's at. The hottest temp I can get is 100 degrees, so it's still not very high pressure at all. But regardless, it is getting warm. The tank is cold. At only 70 degrees, so I have zero concern for the tank. Pump's probably warm. Yeah, that's 128. So most of that heat is probably coming off the pump, more so than the pressure difference. Definitely getting low on pressure now. Oh, we're actually at a vacuum on the vehicle on the low side. Good. So we're, the, we're definitely getting there. Now, if I were to block these off, they should increase pressure. We'll go to this one because it's more sensitive. So if I close this off, it should go up. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I actually got a vacuum in it. Good. Or maybe it's because of this other one. I'll close both, see what happens. Yeah, I got a vacuum. Good. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna close some valves on the low side, undo the compressor, close the high side, and now, get all the valvage closed. We'll see what happens to the pressure here. I'm even gonna go ahead and close these. And if it stays under a vacuum, we're good to go. Well, I just got done pulling the AC gauges off of there. It is just barely above the zero mark. So there's almost nothing in it as far as pressure goes. So I went ahead, pulled it off. Now I'll be able to go ahead and do the service I need to do to the system. I'll get the parts swapped over and then we will get this thing recharged. Now, for those of you who don't know, another difference between the one, two, three, four, YF, which is probably why you're clicking on this video, honestly, is your 134 gauge set will not fit on the fittings. The fittings are different for this AC system, both high and low. They look very similar, but they are different. So that is why you have to have a separate gauge set just for it, or at very least the attachments. You probably could use a 134 gauge set on there. Uh, you just, you know, the pressures are the same. You just have to have the right fittings. And theoretically, 134A is compatible in these systems. It's just not as efficient or so they claim. So take that with a grain of salt. Do what you will. If you want to convert it to a 134A, I'm not going to say you can't, but I'm not going to say you should either. So take that for what it is and uh, we'll go ahead and charge this up in a little bit. Unfortunately, I have to end this clip early. I lost the video and audio for the actual charging process on this Mustang. So, because of that, I'm just going to kind of have to explain it. Basically, the charging process is how I removed the charge from it, only the opposite. Instead of putting it into the tank, I'm putting it back into the vehicle. But you could charge it just like any other vehicle once it's running. You can use your, your vehicle to actually charge it. So, of course, you have to pull a vacuum on the vehicle and then go ahead and start pulling Freon and you measure out, you get your Freon prepared. Of course, you're gonna have to have a scale and all that. And then put the proper amount of Freon in. Let it suck as much as it can from the vacuum. You probably won't get it all. You'll have to start the vehicle and then let the compressor of the vehicle, once it starts cycling, pull in whatever else you need. So basically just like charging any other system. So hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully it was entertaining. And with that, thanks for watching.